Welcome to Algorithms with Professor Caleb. Today I'm going to talk about bottom up merge sort. So, in the last video, we talked about merge sort, but now we want to look at how to do merge sort without recursion. The goal here is to reduce overhead. We're going to do that by skipping the divide step and just using loops rather than recursive. We're going to start by thinking of the whole array as in different logical arrays, which means they're all sorted already because there's only one item. So let's look at the same array we were sorting last time with the top down version of merge sort. And we're going to treat each one of these spots as an array. So we start out with 12 different logical arrays. Each one has one item. So then we're going to start merging pairs. So we merge the first pair together, then the second pair, the third pair, the five and the 15, the one and the 12, and then finally that last pair, the two and the 16. So all we've done here is run through a loop, merging each pair of items using our merge function. So now we have sorted pairs, we can now look at this and start thinking about merging them into fours. So we then run through the loop again, this time merging each consecutive pair into a four. So the three and 10 get merged with the seven and 19, the four and the 18 get merged with the five and the 15, and the one and the 12 get merged with the two and the 16. Then at the next step, we have these sorted runs of four, and now we're going to merge them into eights. So we merge the three, seven, 10, 19 with the four, five, 15, 18. Then as we start to do the next merge, we only have one half. So we're just gonna copy it down. There's nothing to merge it with. So that leaves us ready for the final merge for this particular small example. So now we're going to merge the first eight with the remainder. Sometimes it will be true that the second part of our merge, we don't have all of the items, but we're still thinking of merging it into 16s. So we merge those first eight items with the last four. Each of these steps, we've used the same merge process that we use with the top-down version. The only difference here is that we skip the whole divide step and just say, okay, each item is its own thing. Let's start merging. And then we merge until we only have everything in one long, already merged array. So performance of this is pretty comparable. We still need two arrays for efficient merging, so our space cost is still going to be 2n. And the actual time performance is still in log n. We can recognize this because we're first doing ones, then twos, then fours, then eights, then 16, on up until we have the whole array covered. So once again, we have that log n number of sets of merges and each set of merges we're doing is going to be in. So in times log in and log in. However, with this approach, we do see less overhead. First of all, we don't have any overhead from recursion. So recursion does cost a certain amount. We skip that. The other thing is that we can actually, if we do this thoughtfully, we can avoid copying back after the merge. For example, if we're using dynamic arrays in C++, we can simply set up another pointer. And after each loop through all the merges at a certain size, we can simply flip which one's the from array and which one's the to array. So whatever we copied to is now where we're going to be merging from on the next loop. 
we can take similar approaches with vectors, with Java, with our object references, in other languages as well. Note that this does not change the fundamental time and space complexity. That's still the same. What it does do is reduce the amount of overhead. So it reduces our constant factors in terms of time somewhat. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.